Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Nicole Capizzi. And I'm Molly Fox. Here's your weekly update. Around 40,000 runners are signed up for the Blue Cross Broad Street Run happening on May 5th in Philadelphia. Mayor Michael Nutter has recently announced in a press conference that with the Boston Marathon bombings, we can expect to see a major increase in security. We are at heightened alert only from the standpoint of making sure people are vigilant, said Philadelphia Police Commissioner Charles Ramsey. The Radnor Township Recreation and Community Programming Department, along with Wayne Business Association, are teaming up together to deliver the upcoming Wheels of Wayne car show. This is a first time car and motorcycle event in Wayne. This will be a family friendly event that is free to attend and for all ages. Local business will be providing entertainment, food, and prizes. The event is located at the Wayne train station on North Wayne Avenue. For more information, visit patch.com. The English department will be launching their literary website next semester. Let's take a closer look at what we can expect and how students can submit their own pieces of work for publication. I'm Bethany Bigginhoe on location for location, and today we're talking to Dr. Amy Persichetti about the launch of the Woodcrest Magazine website. Let's check it out. So the Woodcrest publication is a publication we've had on campus um, for a long time now. Um, Dr. Freshy has typically run the print edition. Um, and what we started to see was that as the digital age advanced, uh, we were looking for a way to put the print edition online. To submit anything, you would would send an email to woodcrestproject at gmail.com and we look for a lot of different types of things. We look for fiction, nonfiction, uh, poetry, art and photography. Um, we also look for music reviews, film reviews, book reviews. Uh, so really it's a publication that captures what you might imagine in a publication, say like The New Yorker or Rolling Stone or um, the literary magazines. You really want it to be open to everybody on campus, a lot like um, The Loquitur is a campus publication that belongs in Com, but everybody on the campus participates in and reads and gets excited about. Um, we'd like Woodcrest to be the literary version of that. The soft launch, what we're calling it as a soft launch, is a departmental launch. And what we're going to do is on April 29th at the English Department Dinner, um, we're going to show English majors what we're creating. Um, and then we're looking toward a fall launch that would be campus-wide. But we want to be sure that um, the publication is up to speed and that everything is as we want it before we show it to the entire campus community. I'm Bethany Bigginhoe. Now back to the news desk. That was your trip around the block. So, Kevin, what's new with sports this week? Well, Mother Nature halted the Phillies game on Tuesday. So there's a lot going on in the next couple of days for the Phillies, so let me tell you about it. The Phillies game against the Cincinnati Reds on Tuesday was suspended after the top of the ninth inning due to rain. The game will be completed on Wednesday night prior to the teams playing another full game to close the series. The Phillies are currently 6-7 and seven on the season after losing to the Reds 4-2 on Monday. The men's lacrosse team scored two dominating victories last week. On Wednesday, April 10th, the Cavs routed Rosemont College 27-2. On Saturday, they extended their winning streak to six games with a 22-2 win over Marywood University. The Cavs go for their seventh straight win on Thursday when they face Newman University. The Lady Cavs claim their eighth straight win on Tuesday, defeating Immaculata University 18-8. With the win, the Lady Cavs guaranteed themselves a first-round bye in the CSAC playoffs and can clinch home field advantage with the win in their next game against Rosemont College on Saturday at 1 p.m. The Sixers are closing out their season on Wednesday, but the big story is on the sidelines. Doug Collins will resign as Sixers coach following the season the team announced on Monday. The Sixers will be searching for their eighth coach in 11 seasons this offseason. Tune in next week for a look at the Phillies' upcoming homestand and an update on the Cavaliers' playoff run. Now here's Molly with your trip across the nation. Two bombs exploded near the finish line of the Boston Marathon on Monday, killing three people, one of which was eight-year-old Martin Richard, who was running to his father, who had just crossed the finish line when the explosion took place. The two bombs also injured nearly 200 others. A third blast then followed at the John F. Kennedy Presidential Library, which authorities thought was related, Boston Police Commissioner Ed Davis said. 
However, it was, un it was an unrelated fire. The explosions near the Marathon's finish line sent smoke billowing into the air at Copley Square, turning a site of celebration into a mess of destruction. With hysteria high, a suspicious package was reported just the next day at U.S. Airways flight from Boston to Philadelphia, which ev was evacuated after landing in Boston. Other cities, including New York and Washington, tightened security as a result. Following the standard protocol, the White House cleared out an area in the front of the West Wing. White House ma mail handlers identify a suspicious substance suspected to be a poison ricin in the letter sent Wednesday to President Barack Obama. Ricin is a deadly toxin with no known antidote. A dose as small as a few grains of table salt can kill an adult human. According to Secret Service spokesman Brian Leary, there was also a letter found in a Senate mailroom that matched the signature of Ricin. Both letters arrived this past Tuesday at an off-site postal facility set up after the 2001 anthrax attacks and had been sent to laboratories for additional tests. Authorities said, the FBI said that the envelope preliminary tested positive for ricin. Also on Wednesday, Capitol Police were checking out reports of suspicious packages in two Senate office buildings and all congressional staffers were ordered to remain in their offices. The first floor of the Hart Senate office building was evacuated shortly before noon and police were questioning a man with a backpack in the area. In a statement, the FBI said no indication of a connection between the tainted packages and Monday's bombings at the finish line of the Boston Marathon. But the discoveries highlight the heightened security concerns at a time when con Congress is considering politically volatile legislation to toughen gun laws and reform the immigration system. Avenue Q made its way to Cabrini College, and our own theater students had the chance to perform it. Let's see how it went. Avenue Q follows the lives of residents who live on the avenue and uh, it starts with a new member coming in named Princeton and he's looking for a place to live. He just got out of college looking for his purpose in life and you follow him along his journey as he meets all the other residents and lots of fun things happen. I was actually in the theater when I was here in Cabrini. Um, I actually love the show. I did a lot of actually depressing shows when I was here. I was a little um, disappointed when I heard they were going to do Avenue Q because I love the show. They kind of cleaned it up because it is a Catholic school, but I think they did a great job with what they had and um, the controversy for the actual show. Um, I think it works well with uh, what the Catholic school um, does. Nikki is my favorite character. He's um, he's one of the roommates, and he's kind of a he's kind of a main character. He's the second act he's really focused but he gets thrown out and really that's kind of the story he's living homeless and he's trying to patch things up but it's really it's there's a conflict between him and his roommate and that's his whole side of the show if you were gay. We live on Avenue Q, and um, thank you for interviewing me. <laughs> um, well, our story is we're all graduated from college, and we're, uh, we kind of don't know what we're doing with our lives, mainly like every other college student. And this little fellow over here uh, moves to Avenue Q. <laughs> Anyway, we open this Thursday um, here at Cabrini College. It's very nice. Um, let's see. Uh, it's the 11th at... To the 14th. Yes, to the 14th. And then the following weekend is the 18th to the 21st. 21st? 21st. Yeah, 21st. Didn't I say that? Didn't I say that? Um, what are our times, Princeton? Uh, well, on the 11th, 12th, and 13th, it's at 8. Mm-hmm. And on the 14th, it's at 2. Yeah. And on the 18th, 19th, and 20th, it's at 8. And on the 21st, it's at 2. Perfect. So make sure you come see me. Not mm -hmm. her. Uh, rude. I'm the big deal. I'm the big deal. No, no, not her. no. That outfit's hideous. Uh. I think you should change. <gasps> so come see us. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. That was your trip across the nation. Christine, what's new with entertainment? Well, the MTV Music Awards were this weekend, so let me tell you about it. Another year and another MTV Movie Awards is in the books. 
The 2013 edition of the show has come and gone, and it was made of all more tremendous by the comedic styles of Rebel Wilson, who not only hosted the show, but won the Breakthrough Performance Award as well. Wilson stands out as one of the biggest winners of the evening, but she wasn't the only person at the Movie Awards with a reason to celebrate. Other celebrities took home various awards, such as Bradley Cooper, for cleaning up the show with two wins, including Best Male and Best Kiss for Silver Lining Playbook. The MTV Movie Awards not only generated some wild headlines, but it also posted some decent ratings. The annual award fest averaged 3.8 million viewers and was up 21% versus the previous year. That's all I have in entertainment news for this week. Now let's check in with Nicole for your trip around the world. Tuesday was the sixth anniversary of the Virginia Tech shooting rampage. As the nation mourns this fresh tragedy of Boston, the state of Virginia is pausing to honor its victims from April 16, 2007, when a 23-year-old college student went on a shooting spree at the campus in Blacksburg. Thirty-two victims were killed, and the gunman took his own life. It's considered the deadliest shooting rampage in modern U.S. history. Virginia's governor has named April 16th as the official day of remembrance. At the stroke of midnight, a ceremony candle was lit and remained so for 24 hours. And at 9.43 a.m., a statewide moment of silence was observed. The security plans for the London Marathon this weekend are being reassessed after the deadly bomb blasts in Boston, according to CNN. Police and race organizers said they are working closely on security for Sunday's race. About 35,000 runners take part in the London Marathon each year, and many more people turn out to cheer them on. London is the next after Boston of the six races that make up the World Marathon Majors Series. The London Marathon organizers said that Tuesday the event will go ahead as originally scheduled. Doctors say the discovery of a four-year-old carrier of the H7N9 bird flu virus who shows no symptoms of the potentially lethal virus is a worrying development that could make the spread of the infection even more difficult to monitor. The Beijing Municipal Health Bureau said that the boy was detected from a group of close contacts of the first infection in Beijing. Laboratory results showed the boy was an asymptomatic carrier of the disease. The report said the boy's parents were engaged in poultry and fish trading. If the virus can be transmitted from human to human, China will be facing a much larger dilemma. Cabrini College has many students whose talents go above and beyond what they learn in the classroom. This week, we were given the opportunity to have Alicia Beringer on the show to share one of her pieces of spoken word poetry with us. Tears flow like heavy menstrual and mascara rivers of regret stream from her eyes. Fusa started in um, 2007 um, at Infusion Coffee and Tea. It is a poetry slam. Open mic is the first poetry slam that's certified by Poetry Slam Incorporated, which is a national nonprofit organization in Philadelphia. So um, we kind of made Philadelphia history with that. The slam is more so the competition we take place in. And and poetry is what we do, poets are what we are, but slam is a competition. So slam in you know the literary sense gives poets a chance to basically display that talent, you know, in a larger scale um, and also compete. It was laughter and parts of my poem, it was, you know, cheers, it was somebody responded by saying like in the like kitchen somewhere and said like knife or something I said, they quoted me. So that kind of given within poetry slams um, is what makes the energy continue. Um, it's a more about connecting to the audience more so than anything. Not just me reciting the piece and hoping that you like it, but me really talking to you, speaking to you, you speaking back to me, and me giving you more back, and you giving me more back. It's kind of a relationship between the audience and the poet. My whole crew is extremely impressed with the quality of writing that we heard. I know some people came for class, but they really put in time, they really put in effort, and they really said what they meant. And um, when it came on the open mic, we were all just sitting back there like, man, this is so good. And um, we're really impressed by y'all. We're really impressed. Um, we're every second and last Friday at 45th and Baltimore, Studio 34. We start at 8. Students are $5, only $5 for students. And we would love for Cabrini to come out and um, be a part of our family. Thanks for catching up with us this week. 
For Location Weekly News, I'm Nicole Capizzi. And I'm Molly Fox. Be sure to stay updated with us this week by following us on our social media sites. Simply search Location News. Have a great week, Karini.